Hello everyone, I am the Commander Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews under the deck text. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a commander from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, Minsk Beloved Ranger. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It'll really help out the channel. The best way you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. For just $1, patrons get early access to certain videos on YouTube. In fact, patrons got a chance to see this video earlier. You can also support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing, and sharing, which also helps out a lot. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Minsk is a 3-3 human ranger for 1 red, 1 green, and 1 white. When he enters the battlefield, you create Boo, a legendary 1-1 hamster token with trample and haste. As adorable as hamsters are, and as epic as the flavor text on the token is, creating Boo isn't the main point of the deck. It's Minsk's second ability. For X, you can make any creature you control become an XX giant. This deck aims to abuse this not just to create literal giants, but to also turn some key creatures into 0-0 in order to make the most of their death triggers. Essentially, this deck treats Minsk as a free sorcery speed sacrifice outlet for creatures that aren't pumped. Although this kind of strategy is more black and line than red, green, or white, there are plenty of interactions and creatures to make this strategy incredibly viable. So let's start with the ones that don't need too much of a setup and can essentially work on their own. Academy Rector and Arena Rector are two such creatures. These rectors can cheat in the permanent they look for which is pretty busted. There are a couple of enchantments and planeswalkers to get with either of these respectively which we're going to see in a bit. But the best target for Academy Rector, which if you can't afford black bordered is fortunately gold bordered, is Martyr's Bond. If you've seen enough of my content by now you should know how much I love effects like Dictative Variables and Grave Pack. This one takes it a step further by going tit for tat with the card type. Although we are losing creatures by paying zero with Minsk, doing so can have the rest of the table sacrifice the creature as well which is amazing. Unfortunately, we can't use Minsk as instant speed, but the deck has other ways to do that. Protean Hulk and a creature enchanted with Pattern of Rebirth can get us creatures from the library similarly to how the Rectors get their respective permanents. While the aura isn't restricted to casting cost, Protean Hulk can get us multiple creatures so long as their combined casting cost doesn't exceed 6. Most of the creatures we could want are less than 7 mana anyway so we can either get one of those or multiple cheap ones. This effect is very situational but it can definitely get some of the engines and combo pieces in play for free, but more on those synergies later. Summoner's Egg can also do something similar, but the creature has to be in our hand. This is on the right curve too since it costs 4 mana. So we can first play Minsk, then play the Egg, pay 0 to make it a 0-0, then cheat whatever fatty we have and Pritchett on it. This can get us way ahead very early on. Moving along we have Metodic Slime and Symbiotic Worm, which can serve to fill the board with tokens. These might seem as busted as some of the other creatures, but they can fuel plenty of engines in the deck. For one thing, they're beaters in and of themselves. However, if we need to go wide instead of tall, we can make them 0 zeros with Minsk or sacrifice them some other way. But we'll see how else they synergize with the deck further along. Seed Guide Ash, Solemn Simulacrum, and Wolf Shaper are more helpful than outright synergistic since they help with mana acceleration. The Tree Folk is especially useful here. It has a decent body, but if we already have Minsk out, then for 5 mana we can cast it, then pay 0 to fetch for 3 forests in our library and get them tapped. With the way it's worded, they don't even need to be basic lands, which is amazing. World Shaper is especially useful at helping us reuse any of the fetch lands already in the graveyard to ramp harder and keep thinning the deck of lands. Cavalier of Flame and False Prophet are some more oppressive effects considering that they have the potential to wipe the board. The Cavalier does nomble with World Shaper's ability since his death trigger wants us to have as many lands in the graveyards as possible, but this all depends on how the game is going anyways, so they're not necessarily exclusive wars in the deck. False Prophet is especially brutal since it exiles all creatures when it dies. If you just have Minsk, you do have to make it a 0 0 sorcery speed. But at least if you're in control of the situation, you can make your other creature 0, zero and then do it to the Prophet in order to not have your creatures get exiled, so it's very versatile and scares a lot of players, even more so when you can reuse these effects. Mimic Vat lets you accomplish this by imprinting a dying creature. It doesn't even have to be your creatures either. Any creature that died belonging to anyone else can be imprinted here, so this also helps you essentially steal any creature you kill off your table with the abilities. Hoffrey Gauls Forge can achieve something similar as well. When a creature control dies, Hoffrey creates a spirit copy of it. The original does get exiled, but at least it returns to the graveyard when the copy leaves the battlefield. The only issue with Hoffrey is giving plus one plus one to spirits, so Minsk can't make them 0-0. But at least we can still freely and instantly sacrifice our creatures with things like Perilous Forays, Ashton's Altar, Phyrexian Altar, and Greater Good. The first one is the only one requiring mana to activate, but at least you can ramp at instant speed and the land doesn't have to be basic. So you can fetch for any basic type non-basic lands. The altars are pretty self-explanatory. Greater Good is especially amazing here because we can make any creature XX to draw X cards and then discard 3, so we can essentially draw almost as well as a blue deck with just Minsk and Greater Good. Lifeline has any creatures that die return to the battlefield so long as another creature is in play. 
Unfortunately, this effect is symmetric, so be careful against what you're playing against before you cast and use it. However, we should be able to make the most of it. We can 0-0 any of our creatures leaving Minsk behind. Since Minsk is still on the battlefield, those creatures should return. However, even though Minsk can be used as a free sacrifice outlet for creatures without any pumps to their toughness, he can still be used how most people envisioned, pumping a beater via sorcery speed mana sink. Since his ability is X generic mana, Hearthstone and Zerda the Dawn Waker are amazing at reducing that cost. You might think that them being unable to reduce activation cost to zero is a bad thing, but it's actually good, because you want to be able to pay zero to make creatures zero zero. However, thanks to them you could pay one for X and actually make the creatures bigger than one one since they reduce the cost. For example, having Hearthstone means choosing X equals two but only paying one. Having Zerda means choosing X equals three but only paying one. Having both means choosing X equals four but only paying one. As a bonus, Zerda can also tap down a potential blocker or utility creature. Other ways to take advantage of Minsk's ability is that the creature becomes a giant, quite literally. Borderland Behemoth, Calamity Bearer, and Fire Giant Spiri all take advantage of this. With Borderland Behemoth, you'd only need to pay 1 per creature to make them 1-1 one, one giants, thus giving this giant plus 4 plus 4 more for each of them. Having Trample means that it's going to get through for some insane amounts of damage. With Calamity Bearer on the battlefield, for double that damage is it's a giant. In fact, that remains true for any creature Minsk turned into a giant, which means not having to pump them so much with it. With Fire Giant's Fury, you can make that creature even bigger, giving them Trample, and then you impulse draw that many cards from your library when he deals damage. And you can still access them until the beginning of your next turn, which is insane. Speaking of gaining advantage from damage, Old Gnawbone is simply busted with Minsk. On its own, Old Gnawbone creates tre treasure tokens equal to the amount of combat damage your creatures control. Well, if you make the creature XX and it gets through, you'll get your investment of mana back in the form of treasures. So you're essentially banking your mana. Next turn you can crack those treasures to make X even larger and keep going from there. So it's quite the engine. Even without Minsk, we can still get the treasures to fuel the rest of our game. Nylea God of the Hunt helps in that regard because she gives trample to all of our other creatures. She's also indestructible when devotion is met, making her a good target for Minsk's ability making her huge. She can also serve as a substitute Minsk in a pinch since she has a mana sync ability that actually pumps creatures. Perforous God of the Forge, another potential indestructible beater, can also serve as a creature pump mana sync, but he affects all of our creatures. He also doesn't affect their toughness in case we need to make anything a 0-0 with Minsk in our post-combat main phase. However, the real reason he's here is for his triggered ability. Since we're making creatures 0-0 to make them die for value, a lot of the times we're either getting them back or getting creature tokens from them. Combine this with the previously mentioned Symbiotic Worm and or Metodic Slime, plus a Recursion Engine, and you can potentially eliminate the table that way. This is also great against any prison or control decks you can't defeat via combat. Speaking of combat, Rograk, Son of Roga, and Inkmark Nessus are some amazing beaters that are essentially free. While it's an epic feeling to getting an XX Cobalt with First Strike, Menace, and Trample for just X generic mana, Inkmark Nessus actually has the potential of taking out an opponent for just 11 generic mana. Having Flying does give it some form of evasion, but if it had Trample, you can pump into it whatever is necessary to take out an opponent. Either way, a 10-10 flyer with infect needs to be blocked so you can also take out anything they put in front of it. Or with Rogue's Passage, you can make it or any other beater completely unblockable. Paying 15 mana plus tapping this mana producing land and then using a land to attack means quite a lot of turns might have had to pass, but the deck does have access to green plus it can generate a ton of mana and ramp due to it as well. This is just to guarantee victory anyways, but you can always just get both of these lands at once with Hour of Promise. Not only does this work on its own, but it can also get you both Rogue's Passage and Ikmonk Nethys or any combination of mana producing lands or fetch lands you want to help thin out your library. Wally Radiant Champion is one of the planeswalkers in the deck and synergizes amazingly well here. The deck has plenty of creatures so it is possible she gets a ton of loyalty counters with her first ability, giving you a busted emblem when you activate her the second time. If she sticks around after that, her second ability is pretty much what the deck wants to do, which is pump a creature to smash face. So she also helps bring in redundance of Minsk's ability, at least in the sense of using it to pump a creature. Miss Veil Plains is included to bottom deck any creature we're killing off with Minsk. While this might not seem that useful at first, the deck does have ways to tutor for creatures in order to keep recurring them again and again. It might seem less efficient than outright reanimating the creature, but these creature tutors also work well on their own to help get combo pieces out as well as recycling busted effects. Imperial Recruiter and Recruiter of the Guard help in that regard by getting us a creature with a specific power of toughness. Imperial Recruiter has been reprinted enough to the point where it's very affordable now, something that should happen with most cards, especially ones that were printed in old, unacquirable sets. Eladamri's Call, Worldly Tutor, and Primal Command can just outright tutor for a creature. The command might only be a sorcery, but you can choose any of the other three modes depending on the situation you're in. These are pretty self-explanatory, so let's continue on with some others in the deck. Altar of Bone and Eldritch Evolution are slightly better for this deck in the sense that not only can they tutor for a creature, but you have to sacrifice a creature as part of their casting cost, so they're amazingly synergistic here. The rest of the Planeswalkers in the deck are Garuk Unleashed and Vivian Monsters Advocate. 
Garuk gives a targeted overrun effect for one loyalty, and he can make a blocker to protect him with his minus 2 ability. This can help in creating a potential threat with Minsk, or to simply have a chum blocker. However, his emblem is incredibly busted if we achieve it. Being able to tutor for any creature in our library to put it straight onto the battlefield is ridiculous all on its own. But combining with Minsk, making key creatures 0 0, and then bottom decking them with Minskville planes, means we can get quite the engine going. An engine that's hard to deal with because it's composed of an emblem, a land, and a commander. Vivian lets us see the future of our deck as well as play creatures from the top of it. This is especially strong, but is an amazingly useful bonus. Her plus one also creates a 3 3 green beast to protect herself, as well as being fodder for anything else. However, her ultimate can be used the turn she enters the battlefield, which is another creature tutor effect dependent on the creature we cast to trigger its delayed effect. This deck isn't really that linear, and you've already seen all of the particular creatures in it, so use these tutoring effects depending on the situation and what you need. The following cards in the deck are the essential card advantage responses and mana acceleration of any deck. Chaos Warp, Generous Gift, and Beast Within are given due to the deck's colors, and these are essentially the best 3 cost instants in the format since they can deal with absolutely any permanent at instant speed. The trade-off is hardly ever in an opponent's favor, so these are self-explanatory includes. Hour of Revelation and Aldo Inversion can help in wiping the board in case we're overrun by Swarm decks or Pillow Fort decks. We can only do so much with False Prophet and other effects, so being able to wipe the board is especially useful. Either way, if we lose some of those creatures in the process, it's win-win for us. Flawless Maneuver, Heroic Intervention, and Teferi's Protection can help protect our board from opponent's versions of these responses as well. Bonus points of casting Heroic Intervention in response to your own Hour of Revelation. For just 5 mana, you get to wipe the board of all non lands while keeping your own. Sometimes that's GG all on its own. Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots help protect Minsk. Even though we can recast him multiple times fairly easily in this deck, and he's so cheap to cast as well, they also help any of our beaters be protected. Keep in mind that you can't target a creature with Minsk if they're equipped with the Greaves. Mana Reflection and Next Move Ancient takes our mana generation to the next level, which is especially busted when we have a mana sink in the command zone. Having both out is the dream because then you get to hex tuple your mana production. If that weren't enough, Next Move Ancient also serves as a beater, being a 5 5 trampler by default, but it can easily be much larger thanks to Minsk and itself tripling our mana production. Doubling Cube also provides an insane amount of mana for the deck. Sinking all of our mana into our mana pool and then using 3 of that to double it can be quite the fun mathematics exercise, but the fact remains that it can make Minsk's ability all the more epic. Soul Ring and Mana Crypt are the remaining mana rocks in the deck besides Doubling Cube, but the deck doesn't really need that many mana rocks to begin with since it has access to green. This allows us to play plenty of mana dorks like Burst of Paradise, Avacyn's Pilgrim, Llanowar Elves, Finhorn Elves, Elvish Mystic, and Dryad Arbor. Yes, mana dorks are weak, but either of these dorks can help us get a turn 2 Minsk while the Arbor stays on board after a Cyclonic Rift. So if we pump the Arbor and then an opponent wants to respond by casting or overloading something like Cyclonic Rift, sucks to be them. Keep in mind that you can also get all 6 of these with Protean Hulk's trigger if you have Perforos in play. That alone will deal 12 damage to the entire table, so keep that in mind as well. In any case, Farseek, Nature's Lore, and 3 Visits round out the ramp spells in the deck. You can't go wrong with this trifecta when playing with multicolor commanders that include green, so their use is pretty self-explanatory here as well. For added measure, Yamawaya Gradle of Growth is included to help fix green, which is the most common color in the deck. However, it also helps fetch lands tap down for green if we ever needed them to, which is a nice bonus. Speaking of which, the rest of the deck is just the rest of the lands. The deck's running all 10 fetch lands, all 3 dual lands, all 3 shock lands, all 3 battle bond lands, command tower, reflecting pool, rift's grove, city of grass, mana confluence, and ancient tomb, as well as 2 of each basic land. As with all of my deck techs, the original dual lands, the more expensive fetch lands, and mana crypts aren't entirely necessary for the deck to run, and you can just as easily swap them out for any budget substitutes and the deck will still run well enough. In fact, they compose over 90% of the cost of the deck, so if you don't already have them, aren't playing online, or won't proxy them, you can still easily build this deck. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Minsk Beloved Ranger. The deck aims to make the absolute most of Minsk's ability, whether as a free sorcery speed sacrifice outlet or in order to make huge giants to smash face with. So we can essentially control the board first in the sense of getting rid of any potential blockers, then pump a huge creature up to smash face with and eventually win. This is definitely a fun deck to play with, especially considering that no one's going to expect you to kill off your own creatures for value using Minsk's ability. Or you can just pump up a huge hamster and go for the entire face while you're at it. Why stop at the eyes? I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link that also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of The Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I'm the Manager Kirby, and happy brewing.